This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. Welcome to Starbound Tips Community Edition. If you have tips and tricks, leave them in the comments section below and they may make it into the next video. Also, forewarning, if I can't pronounce your name, you get a nickname. So this first tip we have is from Patty. Patty made a moth tower and basically just filled a tower, I'm guessing. I asked for pictures, but he or she did not send them. Uh, so I'm guessing they just made a huge tower filled full of moth traps. I did a tiny little tower just to get an idea of how it would work and how it would pay off. It does pay off pretty good. You just run through and you collect all of your silk fiber. And I have a little extra one down here that didn't fit in the tower. And then one thing that I did notice about this is that you will get more money if you turn the silk fiber into silk. If we go in here and take a look at our silk fiber, one silk fiber will sell for six pixels in the Terra Shipper. However, if you take four silk fiber and turn it into a silk cloth, you basically get an extra one for free because it sells for 30 in the Terra Shipper. So the best thing you can do is go through and turn all of your silk fiber into silk cloth and then take it over to your Terra Shipper and pop it on in there and sell it. And you can see from that little bit I did there, I got 240. So if you had a big enough tower, this would definitely pay off. There are some things to keep in mind though, the upfront cost, it's gonna cost you three tungsten per moth trap. The other two costs are relatively cheap. I got tons of torches, you get those like crazy. Timber's easy enough to get. It's the tungsten is where it becomes a little pricey. However, after a certain period of time, it should start to pay off because you can buy tungsten bars from the Ursa Miner shop in the outpost. Some other things to keep in mind if you use this method is your planet's day cycle. Basically, you want a planet with the lowest day cycle that you can find. You can look here and this says 13 souls. You can look and see the day cycle of any planet. This is 15. So if you decide to set this up, my advice would be to find a planet with the lowest amount of souls that you can find and use that planet for your moth traps because, and possibly even your home base because the moth traps are based on day night cycle so every time a day passes you will get more silk fiber this would also work for farming your animals if you decide to set up like chickens or the the whatever they call them the buffalo things um, as well that would work too because those are based on day night cycles our next tip comes from monly slumped we're gonna call you mon Mon suggests that you should farm pop tops because they're easy to farm. So to find pop tops, they are in lush planets. So if you go in and you look and they should be next to gentle stars, you find here that you look for this green, it says lush. Every one of those will have a cave on them. Your cave will look something like this. There will be a little dude outside, some tents, and this thingy here that when you highlight over it and scan it, it says it's doohickeys. So look for the doohickeys and you will know you are in the right spot. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go down in your cave. Your cave may be a little different. They're all random and procedurally generated, so it, it may take a little bit of looking around. However, I was lucky enough on this one to find the little pop top area. This big pop top is what you're looking for. You do not want to kill this guy. You'll know you're in the area when it looks like this and you see the two doors. My advice is to get the attention of him if it's not right there from the get go. Just run through this real quick, grab his attention. Then what you're going to do is bait him back to this area right here, jump up to the top and he will run underneath of it. Then you can easily build out and build down standing over top of him without him hitting you and trap him. Now, 
If you don't have the tech, you can farm him pretty easily by trapping him, removing the two lower blocks, and then building this setup here. Now I'm going to stay here for a second so you can pause the video and I made this in a way that you can count the blocks and easily duplicate this. So pause it now. Okay, so let's continue. Once you're here, the pop tops will come. You can just run over to them and spear them. I recommend using a melee weapon like a spear because then you don't have to worry about hitting your main pop top over here. Now, another thing I noticed is that if you get too close, they won't see you. So see, the, the little mini pop top doesn't really care more than I'm here because I'm too close to the wood planks here. So if you back up though, they do notice you and then you can spear them and collect. And this is all fine and good for low tier if you don't really have the tech to farm them. I can't tell you what you're going to make an hour because I didn't really test that one. However, I decided to uh, put a little spark spin on it and automate this and completely automate it so that you can go AFK and farm these guys if you want to. So let's take a look at my setup here. What we have is a not switch, a delay, and then a countdown timer set to one second. Now I'm going to bring up the wiring and now is where you'd want to pause the video if you want to duplicate this wiring. So pause it now. Okay, there's a slight overlap, so just in case you can't see it in the video, I have these two connected. You want to connect the red from the not switch to the blue on your delay switch. And then you're going to connect from that red to the blue up here at your trap door. And then I have it all hooked to this master switch here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the door. I'm going to turn this on and the pop tops are gonna drop down. I'm gonna kill them and then I'll show you the AFK farming. So once you are in here, all you have to do is go into ball form and roll over and then you are in this little area and the pop tops cannot get you. Now, in order to go AFK and not have to worry about food, you need to be in a bed. So I have a bed positioned here. You need to make sure that your head is facing in this direction because your head is where the magnet is to pick up drops. If you face it the other way, the drops will just set here. And then we have our little AFK farm and I did the math on this and after selling the claws and cooking a, all of the meat because you get more for cooked meat than you do raw meat in the Terra Shipper and selling everything, you make about 7K an hour. That's not great, but it's also not terrible for being AFK. If you're going to walk away and go do something, it wouldn't hurt to have a quick travel to this location that you have set that up and you just pop in your bed and go AFK do what you got to do and when you come back you've made money doing nothing so this is definitely a handy little tip thanks mon for the tip on this I'm sure everybody will uh, give this a shot once again if you want to make this I have set this up and made this so that you can count blocks very easily and duplicate this exactly so if you would like to do that make sure you pause the video now Okay, our next tip comes from Andrew Johnson and Andrew Johnson suggested to make a base on the moon because you get lots of easy weapons and money. I did a little research into this and actually the reason that this happens is because the moon is a threat level 10. Any moon will work, they're all the same. The only other highest level is the volcanic worlds which are threat level 6. The moons are the only planets in the game with a threat level 10 and because what your people give you is based on the threat level of the planet that you're on, you get extremely high level weapons. If we take a look here, I got this wand and it 
it is a level 10 that shows you that you do get level 10 weapons those sell for a good bit plus you also get a decent chunk of change however it's completely random what you get i get a lot of times i just get crap loads of bandages and javelins and other random crap that i don't want but then sometimes i come through and i get you know five or six grand so let's go through and i'll show you guys an example of what happens when we go through and collect now I just copy and pasted these and pack these guys in here. I'm sure I could have made it a lot tighter, but this was just kind of for testing purposes. I plan on changing it up later and packing more people in here to get better chances of getting more stuff. Okay, so we managed to get two weapons this time. We got a level 10 wand with fire swarm and energy zone. That's not terrible. And then we got a one handed axe that does 56 damage. That's not bad at all. Plus, we got a little bit of a good chunk of change from it. Not bad. Now, there are some things to keep in mind when you are doing this. One thing is the meteor showers. My advice would be to build underground. I did not build underground. I built above ground, and we'll get into that here in a second. But if you build below ground, you're going to want to clear out an area. There are You may get lucky and end up on a moon that has a nice big open area like you see here, or you could end up with one that does not, and you have to clear an area. If you do build underground and you do mine the fuel crystals, there is an easy way to get rid of the ghost once you're done. My advice would be to mine out the ones you need, then you beam to your ship and you drop them off wherever you want in your ship, in your fuel slot, in your storage, wherever. And then you come back down. As long as you do not have any of these crystals on you, when you teleport to the moon, the ghost will not be here. As long as you do not harvest them when you are here, the ghost will not be here. Having them in your inventory is what triggers the ghost. Now, if you want to build above ground and you don't want to have to worry about any of that, there is a trick for that too. Now, I've done some pretty thorough testing on this, and from what I can tell, the meteors can only spawn where there is no background, and they spawn in location to you, so you are the trigger for the meteor showers. If you build a large area around your base like I have done here, and you make sure the background is filled in, you will not have any meteors spawn. I have tested this. I have a location that you see here. Now, in this location, I have just built a crap ton of back wall all over the place, as far out as I could manage and in pretty far directions in both. And from what I can tell, if you get out of screen just a little bit, on each side from where your base would be you should be fine because I slept in this sleeping bag and stayed AFK for a good hour and no meteor spawned at all so if you take a look here if this is the center point if we come out you can see about how far you would need to build out on each side of your base with back wall if you do not build the back wall meteors will spawn now your other option is you can build in the sky here i am at the very tip top of the same moon and i'm as high as i can go if you look we jump up we get stuck if you build out and build don't build down too far because then you will you have a chance of getting hit by meteors but if you build a nice little strip basically across the top here you can completely avoid not having to worry about you know mining the the fuel and all that avoid the ghosts and you should be able to avoid the meteors just fine from what i can tell the few meteor showers that I have had up here, they start down around this area because they come from out of screen and they come at an angle. I don't get hit. Now, if you wanted to, if you were worried about it, you could just extend your walls a little bit, but you will not have any come from the top here and hit your base. At least I didn't. If anybody hasn't issue with this and it does happen please let me know because i am trying to figure these meteors out completely and understand them as much as i can i'm describing to you what i've gotten so far from my testing results if you build a base up here and get different results or you build a base on the surface and you have a huge back wall and you get different results please let me know in the comments below 
Now this next tip comes partially from me and partially from another YouTuber named Thunder Cookie. And I will provide a link to his channel down below. You should definitely check it out. He's got a lot of really cool tips down there. He also does this cool series where he spawns in custom weapons using uh, admin commands. And it's really neat. He gives you the commands so you can copy and paste them and spawn them in. Not affiliated with him in any way. I just found his channel and my channel is about celebrating gaming. And when I find an awesome YouTuber like that that really gets into the gaming, you know, why not share him? So make sure you check out his channel. He's, like I said, got a lot of cool stuff on there. But he gave me this idea in one of his videos where you can dupe fluid. Any fluid will work. Here I am duping fuel. And if we take a look, I will harvest up all of this fuel and you can see that I have it automated. So once I harvest it, it automatically kicks on. Now I'm in an ocean biome so that I can get infinite water. You can do this any way you want, but I've done it so I don't have to harvest water. The infinite water allows me to just do this automatically. Now what happens is, is you want to slow the dripping effect of the water as it comes over. And to do this, I have just basically built this little curve and it slows the, the water down and then it hits this platform and I have a drain here. And that drain slows it down even more. And if you look, you can see it split on both sides. Now, I've done a lot of testing on this and this is about the fastest I've been able to get it. If I remove this drain, it's a little bit faster, but there is a chance of the water piling up on top of the fuel. And if that happens, they just don't separate. You just end up with water over top the fuel and it gets a little janky and it's not good. I don't like it. So I've put the drain there. The drain is always on. Now, what I've done here is... I have a liquid sensor here and a liquid sensor here. When I mine below here, it automatically turns on. When it gets to here, it automatically turns off. I have a, another switch set up to the two drains over here so that if I need to empty this out because I want to dupe a different fluid, I can do so. This works with any fluid. Now keep in mind that if I had this tank full of normal water and I, I put a drop of poison in here, it would turn to poison. So you can already dupe poison. You can also do the same thing with the healing water. I could just fill this full of water, put a drop in, and it would make more healing water. However, there's some fluids that do not work like that, and you have to use this method in order to dupe them, like lava, tar, and of course, the fuel for your ship. Now, let's take a look at my wiring real quick here, just in case you would like to wire up something similar. You can make this as big or small as you would like and you can pretty much harvest it forever and it will just continuously dupe the fluid over and over again. Now you can sell this fuel, but I don't really recommend it for a way to make money. A thousand units of this fuel will only sell for 200 pixels. It's not really worth the time and effort. I guess if you made a big enough vat and you just left it go, maybe but i just don't see the point in it there's a lot better ways that you can go about making money heck the freaking pop top farm is faster than this well that's gonna call it for this episode i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you didn't leave a comment down below let me know what you thought also if you're shy and you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and show your support also, you should follow me on Twitter if you don't already. That is where I give updates to what's going on on the channel and one of the best ways to communicate with me if you wish to do so. Last but not least, make sure you leave your tips and tricks down below and I may put them in the next video. Until next time, thanks for watching.